What is going on, guys? Welcome to our channel. This is Speculation Alley, and I'm your host, Crypto Dilly. And today we're going to get into the beginner's guide of 10KTF. This project is really comprehensive. There's a lot of different layers, and it's kind of complicated to get into. So hopefully, I can clear some things up and get you guys up to speed. Now, the most important piece is obviously, I think, the founders. So we're going to dive right in. The first founder that we're going to be talking about is actually. Uh, Michael Figgy. Michael Figgy is the founder of Possible Productions. Possible Productions is a company that does visual effects for all kinds of different artists. Some of the most famous names are Ariana Grande, Justin Bieber, and they also did an augmented reality stage for Worlds League of Legends, which was super impressive. Alongside him, you have founders like Beeple, who is Mike Winkleman, who sold a NFT for $69.3 million. He's been featured on all kinds of different magazines, and you've even seen him on Jimmy Fallon and other talk shows uh, as well. Now, alongside him, you also have Tim Smith who is probably a lesser known name, but he is also the founder of Blood Company, who is a curator or a uh, basically like booking agency for major artists like Zed. Alongside that, he also is the founder of No Fine Print, which is a wine company. And he also runs the Gossamer Dow. So really impressive background for the first three. And then leading into the final founder that I'm going to talk about, which is Gaio Siri. If you haven't heard that name, you're probably sleeping under a rock. He is the king of NFTs by Variety Magazine. But he also is representing Madonna, World of Women, and also Yuga Labs. Along with that, he is a founder of Sound Ventures. Sound Ventures is a capital venture capital fund with Ashton Kutcher that was initial seed investor into Yuga Labs. Okay, so really strong bridge there. You also have uh, Gaio Siri, who is connected to a lot of different artists and a lot of different backgrounds um, and makes those relationships really strong. And so you have a really, really strong roots of a project with just the founders in itself. So how did the project start? Well, it actually started really organically. It started in Discord channels and people just posting these pictures of uh, these high tops that look very similar to Nike's. And they also had like the IP, which is intellectual property of the NFT project kind of like plastered on top of them. So initially, a lot of people were like, what are these? Uh, we didn't have a lot of information. And so it really uh, sparked like the curious group of people to dive into the project. And that's how we actually discovered We Knew Moments. And We Knew Moments was actually discovered by the backdrop of the actual collection with Wagmi-san's desk. And it has these banners that actually have the We Knew logo on them. And it was the exact same logo to We Knew Moments, which is created by We Knew Labs. And We Knew um, Moments was originally just We Knew Moments before they became We Knew Labs. But it has the same founders, and they are responsible for a partnership with Louis Vuitton and creating Louis the Game. Uh, but on top of that, they also are a strong partner with Andy Murray with Wimbledon, and they did this NFT collection with him. So uh, they are the first to do digital uh, like collect physical collectibles that are displays. Uh, really impressive background there. But really what's drawing everybody in and really what was the meta and I would say is still is storytelling. Uh, 10KTF is a storytelling NFT and we just wrapped up season one. And so I'm going to play back that season one to catch you up to speed on the storyline. Let's get into it. Wagmi-san opens up a shop in New Tokyo called 10KTF. He has great success selling high tops and day packs, but the Toads want their protection money. Wagmi-san's success attracts much attention in his neighborhood, and the Toads steal items that are for sale in his store by sweeping the floor on OpenSea. They then beat up Wagmi-san and make him pay triple. Wagmi-san decides he will hide his materials out of the store and airdrops them to his friends for help. Boss Toads doesn't like him hiding the materials from him and decides to burn some of the bags he stole to send Wagmi-san a message. Wagmi-san isn't scared and decides to show his friends how to craft items for him so they can create items for the store. We are given tools and schematics to begin crafting. The community shares tools to craft blanks. Wagmi-san's success reaches beyond New Tokyo to New York City using his portal. Friends of Wagmi-san go on a scavenger hunt to uncover the map of New Tokyo. 
Wen Moon is then introduced and puts together a plan to steal back the protection money and day packs that were taken by boss toads. The toads find themselves caught off guard, leaving the city at peace. This is when Wagmi-san introduces his old friend, Alessandro Michele, from Gucci, and together they craft Gucci Grails. Wagmi-san's fame reaches new heights. Boss Toads doesn't like that Wagmi-san is gaining fame, so Boss Toads demands a collection be made for the Toads. Wagmi-san creates a collection for the Toads, but he pulls off a trick and the Toads wind up looking stupid. While the Toads look weak, other gangs see an opportunity to take over this corner of the neighborhood, which is when something amazing happens. On 420, our hero, Figgy McFiggyson, presented to us in a failed or rugged Twitch stream. The stream was one part of a story beautifully playing out across platforms. Figgy's rugged stream was interrupted due to an accidental fire. As 10KTF started to tweet what was happening in New Tokyo, the website updated with plumes of smoke from Wagmi Sun's store. Even the Discord channels started to burn. We never did see the full presentation and PDF after the fire. Wagmi Sun reflects on the results of paying protection money or not paying protection money. No matter what, it results in the same outcome. It's time for Wagmi Sun to take a stand. The Grail joined together to help Wagmi Sun rebuild the shop better than ever. This is done by the launch of Battletown, where users are able to deploy their PFPs on missions. Equipping items in the right combination brings more power to each mission. The question then arises, how are we to fight with just bags and high tops? So when Moon kidnaps a toad to torture and uncover future plans so Wagmi Sun can be ahead. But while she is gone, Wagmi Sun loses creative vision trying to dream up new ideas. Inspiration strikes, and Wagmi Sun places a large order with a supplier, which is so large they gift him a new car. Wagmi Sun builds a portal for everyone to visit New Tokyo. While in New Tokyo, we learn of Wagmi Sun's partnership with Puma and await the arrival of Wagmi Sun himself. But Boss Toads doesn't want to let go of his power and allow Wagmi Sun to gain traction. So to stop Wagmi Sun, he summons a kaiju, which threatens all of New Tokyo. Wagmi Sun enters New Tokyo playing his jams, only to be stunned to see a giant kaiju destroying the city. It locks eyes on Wagmi Sun, and he ends up rolling his car. Wagmi Sun dreams of a mech defeating the kaiju before being pulled from the wreckage by Wen Moon. As Wagmi Sun recovers, we help him find his glasses in the other side first trip. Someone broke their glasses at NFT NYC. Then we get word that Alessandro from Gucci has an idea that could defeat the kaiju. Everyone who owns a Gucci grail is gifted Gucci material. The next week, it's announced we will use ApeCoin, and everyone who had an NTD allocation will actually receive Ape. At the time of the claim, we are able to purchase combat crates using Ape to help wagmi -san fight the kaiju. The combat gear includes helmets, Kevlar vests, swords, flamethrowers, and more. We are able to then begin crafting our PFPs onto these items to prepare for battle. Wen Moon devises a plan to lure the kaiju to the other side of the city using music. Midori Land is born and led by team captains from the community. Diamond Hands, Atari, and Mabinetta choose their songs to defeat the kaiju. The kaiju is put to sleep through the power of music. While the kaiju is asleep, the community devises a plan to lure the kaiju into a trap. 10KTFM reporters Abom and Modest are kidnapped by Wen Moon during a Crazy Carl Spaces with Beeple to show off the mech. The kaiju is then lured into the trap and we attack with all of our weapons, socks full of doorknobs, swords, and flamethrowers. As a final attempt to end things once and for all, we unleash the mech and it charges into battle. As the no-neck mech rushes into battle, it's hopped onto and ripped apart in a matter of seconds. wagmi -san is defeated and has lost all hope. Boss Toads realizes there will be no one to pay him protection money if there is no longer anyone living in New Tokyo and decides to help wagmi -san. Boss Toads joins the fight and gives wagmi -san the tablet used to summon the kaiju. Wagmi-san summons his cat through the power of friendship, and the cat turns the kaiju into a baby. The city is saved, and Wagmi-san is shown with Wen Moon looking over the destroyed city. It's time to rebuild new Tokyo. Now that you guys have seen the recap of Season 1, you can see that it's a very detailed project with lots of moving parts. However, to give a better perspective, we really need to understand a little bit more about Wienu. So Wienu actually uh, obviously has 10KTF, but they 
created New Tokyo, which is a collaboration of all the IP rights uh, within Web3, all the communities basically merging together. And with that, they have created Altitude, which is Web3 partnership at its peak. Essentially, what this means is it's bringing Web2 brands and being able to collaborate them with Web3. And the way to do that is bringing in partners like Louis Vuitton, who has no Web3 experience and being able to actually launch, you know, collections or games and not have them flop. Beyond Louis Vuitton, they also have major partnerships with Gucci as well. Uh, And they did their first launch of Gucci Grail, which was a project that they launched with the Aria and Love Parade collection, merging that with IP rights through these communities. And 10KTF was able to bring those communities together. Now, we knew has a long history of doing this, um, but they really started from an early stage and they were the first to also do digital displays uh, as physicals and reward their collectors in that regard. Beeple does this all the time and he even gifted Joe Rogan a physical on his podcast. So... Thinking about what this means, we knew has a lot of experience and they have really strong partnerships. Endeavor, IMG, Time, Universal Music Group, and Warner Music Groups. Um, Having those music partners is really eye-opening because there's a lot of potential and some speculation that you can get into, uh, which is really fun. Now, the team is very experienced and it goes even further than just the founders. Uh, You have a very high caliber team. I'm not going to get too much into that, but... What is really interesting is the investors that are backing We Knew Labs as a whole. You have Almeida Research Group. You have Animoca Brands, Coinbase Ventures, Digital Currency Group, Endeavor, FTX, Kinetic, Lion Tree, Polygon, Sound Ventures, True Ventures, and Ripple. To have this kind of backing by investors is really insane and is should be eye-opening to anybody looking into this project because if you look into these individual companies, they're heavy hitters in what they do. So that is a little bit about we knew and obviously getting more into depth. Where do you start? How do you begin? Where do you start your journey? So let's get into that. All right, now that you have a little backstory of we knew and the founders, now we can really dig into the meat and potatoes and to get you actually started. So to begin with, you have these parent NFT collections that are actually fully supported by 10KTF. Those are Oni Force, Board Ape Kennel Club, Board Ape Yacht Club, Cool Cats, Cryptodes, Crypto Punks, Forgotten Souls, Gutter Cat Gang, Me Bits, Moonbirds, Mutant Ape Yacht Club, Nouns, Pudgy Penguins, Forgotten Runes Wizard Colt, Wolf Game, World of Women, and World of Women Galaxy. Now, they're continually expanding this ecosystem, but what's really interesting is that if you own one of these NFTs, you're able to utilize the intellectual property to create items within the 10KTF ecosystem. And they're tiered. So you have the 10KTF collection, which is obviously already already crafted items from intellectual property, but then you also have the 10KTF stockroom. And the 10KTF stockroom is actually a number of items like materials that you can actually combine together to create a blank item and those blank items then can actually be turned into a crafted item within the actual 10 ktf collection so a lot of confusion comes from the multiple collections but right there that kind of breaks it down now with those items if you have the intellectual property you're going to be able to craft and be able to create all the items that you want uh, for Battletown. And so we call it a full set whenever you have all the items needed to uh, fill the slots within Battletown, which I'll get to in a minute. But it's okay if you don't have a parent project NFT. Um, there is a nice low entry point of 0.259 on the floor for crafted items uh, within 10KTF. Now, the reason I say crafted is there's two different actual like types within this collection. You have crafted and then you actually have Genesis items. Uh, if you scroll down um, on the collection, there's a property right here called Genesis. Those are the original items that were actually crafted without you seeing material and tools. And so they only consist of day packs and high tops. Um, and it's going to be the main collections that were actually established from the start. And it has long been said, Genesis is king. Uh, So a lot of the OGs within the community and anybody that's been here for a long time will tell you that that's a great entry point. However, 
it's not necessary and you can get just as much value from using crafted items as well. So the reason I say just as much value is because you're still part of the actual story, but you need to have a parent crafted item in order to actually participate in what we call Battletown. Now, Battletown is a um, website that allows you to actually participate in a play to earn platform. Um, and the way it looks is you can actually see basically a platform where you're able to use your avatar and load in. So you immediately get to this web page and you'll load in, enter Battletown. It enters you through a series of prompts that educates you about the story of the mission that you're about to embark on. Right now we're in inter intermission, so there's no actual like mission that's actually ongoing, but you can see the different past missions right here. And the way they work is they have a mission type and it'll tell you what your objective is. It'll tell you the duration and it'll tell you how many members joined if we've already completed the mission. The mission completed, you can see that you know you have a total number of avatars that you loaded in and you get points for the avatars that you load in and the items associated with them. Now, with that being said, what our goal is, is to collect these story point badges. These story point badges are actually accumulated over time. And by uh, participating within Battletown, you are rewarded. And the reward is actually in the form of ApeCoin. ApeCoin is then claimed on a different website where you can then deposit it right into your wallet that you've been playing Battletown all along. Now, with that being said, there's a lot about Battletown that is a little bit more complex and I encourage you to read the FAQ on this topic. But some of the things that are the most important is that point allocation based on the items that you accumulate. So if you're trying to do it very simple and just join the ecosystem, perhaps you pick up the socks on the floor and that's going to give you a nice 15 points and you can actually load in these items uh, with a blank you don't actually have to own a parent project nft to participate in Battletown. you can just own the crafted socks off the floor that were somebody else's intellectual property and then load that into Battletown, and you're going to get 15 points now there's multipliers on top of that so if you have common uncommon rare epic those also come with different you know point allocations because if you have uncommon socks you're going to get 30 points instead of just the generic 15. and then if you end up adding in the avatar and they're actually the same you're going to get multipliers on top of that so all of this is actually explained but what's great is that Battletown does all this calculation for you as you're actually loading in the different items. And so I'm gonna pop up right here. You can see that you know the boss toad is pictured here and then you have the different items in the different slots and that's gonna give a total score that then is pushed back to Battletown. And once it's completed, the mission's completed, you actually get XP for that and you're gonna hit different rewards for doing that. So we've seen by participating, not only do we get Ape Coin, which is a given, but we've also been rewarded in other ways like material drops um, and other snapshots along the way as well. So that's Battletown in a nutshell. Now 10KTF, um, if you're, you know, if you have intellectual property, you have an item, what you're gonna do is you can actually go to the 10KTF stock room and you're gonna be able to actually craft an item, okay? So what you're gonna wanna do is figure out the pairings of the different uh, combination that you need. And the way that you do this is you actually go into 10KTF.com. You're gonna see the floating new Tokyo and you can see two links. There's back alley and the SSCC, which stands for Super Serious Command Center. You click on the Super Serious Command Center, you're gonna be greeted by our man and Wagami-san and he's actually going to tell you exactly what you need to do through a series of prompts and so he welcomes you in and you just hit continue and you have two options if you have a combat crate from a separate 10 KTF collection you can open those but if you're just here to craft items you're going to hit craft uh, the blanks and then you're going to hit finished blanks um, so right here, it's actually going to tell you what you need to do. And it says you brought materials. Let's see what I can craft with these. This is great because it's going to tell you exactly what you need to be able to craft these different items. There's tools also that are built into this ecosystem, but they're staked. So you actually aren't required to do anything or bring tools. All that you need to craft these items is the actual material. So you can see if I want to create socks, I need to bring the cloth and I'm going to be able to craft that item. 
If I want these shoes, I need a roll of rubber, I need leather, and I need thread. And then I can then drop down and I can craft these blanks. Uh, same thing with the day pack and it continues to go forward all the way through the Rolodex there. Now, if I'm just trying to you know, use my finished items, it's gonna ask me whether I have level two items or if I have level one items. Obviously, if I have level one items, um, it's gonna let me actually craft the level one blank with my parent project NFT. So if I have a cool cat, I'm trying to make a day pack, I'm gonna be able to combine the two and actually create that for myself. So that's how the Super Series Command Center works. And then once you actually have those items, they're gonna be added into the total 10 KTF collection. And then you'll be able to see it and you can sell it within that collection itself. Um, and what's really great is, you know, with these items, the it's always a surprise with the combat gear, but with the other gear, there is community members that can help you and you can see what the rarity tier is before you actually mint the item. And there's also a really handy app that was created by Wyra in our community called Rare Boy. And I highly recommend downloading that Google extension when you're browsing for parent NFTs because it'll tell you how many items have been crafted, uh, how many have not been crafted, and it'll also tell you the rarity tier of the items that can be crafted from that NFT as well. So it's a really awesome awesome for shopping. I highly recommend that. Um, but that is pretty much 10 KTF in a nutshell. Um, I know I covered a lot of ground and I did it in as short as period of time as possible, but hopefully this is enough information for you to make a decision and dive right in. What I recommend doing next is once you have your items, come on in the discord or even before join the discord. You're going to have a warm welcome and we'll help you through the process of buying your first NFT or actually helping you through loading it in Battletown, whatever you need. Beyond that, the only requirement is showing up Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern on the Twitter. 10KTF shop tweets every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern and it will progress the storyline and actually keep you up to date without requiring you to do a bunch of research or, you know, not have a life. Uh, so this is a really engaging project, but it's only as engaging as you want it to be. Uh, I recommend diving in and having as much fun as possible. Uh, this is hands down the best project that I've come across and we continue to put out content speculating about what's next each and every week on this channel. So come back every Wednesday and we have more for you. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, leave a comment below about whether this helped you or not. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.